everybody learns from um, the traditional model of education, which is the most prevalent, but actually a lot of students don't really learn well from that model. When those kids leave there, will they be able to live in the world as it is? That's my concern. I was raised to believe that. I was raised in many ways fed a line that said, the answers are all here, just look at your textbook. And I think that's really when it comes down to it. That's really what the current reality has presented to us, that we have to do better than that. A good education begins with knowing facts. You have to be able to separate <clears throat> what's true from what's not true. But it has a whole lot more to do with getting, gaining a deeper understanding of, of the facts. And, and why they're important and how they relate to each other and, and what does this mean to you as, as a person. One of the key points uh, in, in education that has been lost is to stimulate imagination and critical thinking. It's one thing to be able to pass the test, but what we really want is to have great human beings finish school successfully and decide whether or not they're going to go to college, start a business, do whatever it is they want to do. But we're developing human beings. We're really, that's what I think a school should be doing. I would have loved to go to Mill City High School. Would have loved it. It's exactly what I would have wanted. Especially the bit about mastery in which once you've mastered the basic concepts or the basic curriculum that you're unable to you're then able to go on and push yourself further I would have really appreciated that what mastery is about is obviously about learning and what learning is about is making mistakes and so we we need to practice practice means we do stuff that we're not very good at and gradually we get better we're here to help kids wherever they're at. They may come in needing a lot of help. They may be ready to launch into the next level. And that's what we're trying to do, is to meet kids right where they are. The first goal is growth, and the natural byproduct of growth is higher proficiency. That's one of the great points of mastery, um, is that once you get interested in the topic, you can just keep learning, keep learning, and then keep exploring. <laughs> Once they get done with high school, no one will ever, ever, ever ask them how they did on the NCA test. Nobody cares. They will ask them, who are you? What are you about? What do you have to add to the world to make it a better place? And I want them to have an answer to that question. I want them to have a wise ambition. That's all of the charm of having a school that really reaches the kids where they are as opposed to dragging the kids towards where you are and where you want them. Any teacher will tell you that uh, the key to success is forming a relationship with, with your students. They have to know that you care about them they have to uh, uh, know that you know who they are and that you'll challenge them, but you'll also support them. And so you have to build relationship. It's really crucial to have a connection to the staff or between staff and students in the school. If you don't have a connection um, to the staff, then there's no, you don't feel any accountability to that person. One of the things about classical education is it introduces the idea that we stand on the shoulders of giants and this is who they are. And instead of just picking up a textbook and reading about, say, Plato or something like that, that or Socrates, that they're actually reading Plato. They're reading what Plato wrote about Socrates and they're sitting there figuring it out. And that, to me, that just sounds so exciting. You know how when we were in school, they taught us that uh, Christopher Columbus, he came here and he conquered all the Indians and then here we are. Well, the difference is that 
we never knew the story of the Indians. We never knew who they were. Global Classical takes that and it shows you that you have more roots than just the Spaniards conquering. Um, and so I think that's an advantage. It gives you a more holistic point of view of story. To become a critical thinker means you've developed a tool that now you can use in your life in every situation that you're in. The environment we learn in should be the reflect the world we live in. High schools are very important to be diverse because they'll teach people how to how to be compassionate and understanding of other people. And you know, even for the students here, going to school with people from different backgrounds, they also learn how to interact with people who are not like them. I was made richer but also I was made more responsive, that I was made a more complete person in myself by having people to reflect my reality. What I like about this, this charter school that it seems to be coming from the heart. This seems to be more of a passion project, something that you're, that you're not forcing it into the area, you're bringing it into an area that really needs it already. Everyone knows, residents, civic leaders, business leaders, development community, everyone knows we need more schools downtown. And so the idea of hosting Mill City High School in this space, which is largely used for community good in the first place, is an exciting proposition. Families and students in a high school setting will find themselves flourishing in this really phenomenal ecosystem of community, urban density, commerce, and of course education. One of the difficulties of teaching people math in isolation and science in isolation from literature, from art, is that the world, the universe, doesn't separate math out from science, out from literature, out from social studies. That's not what we experience when we go out in the street. We have interdisciplinary lessons, and so kids will learn about, for instance, social studies, history, whatever, alongside, say you're learning about ancient China, uh, you'll also be learning about the, the art and the music of China. So we, we're combining with the arts with the academics and you get a sort of a whole picture of, of that culture, but you're not just learning about the art and the music, you're actually doing the art and the music. Knowledge in isolation can not only be a scary thing, but it can be a foolish thing. So I believe that integrating all of these things together and helping students learn that all of this moves together in a stream, I think is always going to create more effective thinkers. Complexity science and systems thinking are basically the sciences of interconnectedness, of seeing how the world is interconnected. And actually things make a lot more sense once you start to understand that things are connected than when you think that they're not connected. So there's a lot of situations in the world where people are thinking about this, like there's this much space that they're considering, when the reality is there's this much stuff going on. Not only is it possible to teach students complexity and systems thinking, it's completely necessary. It's perhaps the essential skill of the 21st century because it's how you make sense of ambiguity. It's how you make sense of sustainability. It's the skill you're going to need to combat climate change. It's the skill you're gonna to need to understand a global economy. And I think that's really important for high school students to have that skill and to have that lens, to be able to, to approach what they see not just inside of a box, but to actually be able to link it to the greater world.